Hey guys, I know it's been quite a long time, but I think it's finally time to talk about the Nighthawk. And um, actually, where, where did I put that bike? Hold on a second. There we are. So now that I got this here, let's go over the past two years, where I stand with the bike, what still needs to get done, and why the sudden interest. All right, so before we talk about the status of the bike, let's briefly talk about why I'd like to get this done within the next three or four months. And the answer is I'm taking a new job and I have to move. Now I've already moved once with this bike. Packing it up wasn't all that bad. I have it on this rolling stand. A lot of the parts that I have in the basement are in boxes, but to have to go through this all over again, now with the addition of two other motorcycles, is going to be very difficult in terms of just space management inside of a trailer. So I'd really like to get this buttoned up and bare minimum on tires so that I can roll it around instead of having to deal with this awkward mess. I don't really think it'll take terribly long, but as we all know, you say something's gonna take an hour and it winds up taking a week. So the things that got done off camera, I think were redoing the seat, got a new seat cover on there, I believe I painted the frame. I believe there's a video on mounting the engine inside of the frame. There were some other parts off camera that I was doing just in terms of cleaning up and getting prepped and ready for paint. I still need to repair the dent in the gas tank, paint the gas tank, paint a couple other parts, and then get ready to basically reinstall everything. Now that's assuming that all the electronics still work. That's also assuming that I can at least use the tires to roll it around and maybe do it a couple test drives. I know that I need to get new tires on and from doing that with the Concours, I may or may not do that myself again. That was a lot of work. And from there, it's just gonna be bit by bit, piece by piece. Um, this week, I'm gonna set a goal for myself of getting the forks reinstalled and starting to get the tank repaired and prepped and ready for install. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start chipping away at some of that stuff. So. Here we go again. All right, so luckily, I was at least semi-intelligent when packing up some of the stuff. Everything I put in bags, I put a label on. So this one says oil, oil cooler bolts and O-rings, which I think I'm gonna need to put that oil cooler on at some point. I don't know if that goes on with the oil filter or whatever, but anyway. And then inside this bag, I've got a lot of the front uh, fork parts. So going through the stuff downstairs, thank goodness I semi-organized this because if I hadn't, this would have been a nightmare trying to figure out what part goes where. So at least I can narrow it down to roughly where I am and then I can go from there. All right, so I have all my parts for the fork ready. It's uh, cleaned out the bearing races, cleaned out the other parts over here. It says that there are 19 bearings on the upper race, and I think it's 17 bearings for the lower race. Let me double check. I had that backwards, 18 in the upper, 19 in the lower. But anyway, my ball bearings looked awful, so I was able to pick up just some quarter inch ball bearings. I'm gonna go ahead and grease this all up and then get it installed. So. Let's finally install something on the bike after two years. And I really hope that this stuff stays put. So I'm gonna put a good amount of grease on. At least I've got extra. Okay, that looks Pretty good. Okay, let's get this part in. Please don't fall off. Feels good. Okay, and now 17 up top.
Oh, it's just out of reach. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, good thing I'm a giant. All right, and then you tighten that down till it's snug, back it off an eighth of a turn. We should be good. Okay, I've got the upper fork stem in. Now I need to tap this through until this surface is flush with this surface and then tighten everything up. Okay. Now these need to get torqued down. We'll go from there. Okay, so these get torqued 33 to 40, so I want 35. Do the lower ones first, because that's what the manual says. Okay. Now I think we do the top stem nut. Okay, next up is the stem nut, and I have had this socket from my father for the past two years since I've had the bike. This is a 30 millimeter, which I did not have in my set. And you're supposed to go, uh, I think it's, what was it? 80 to 75 foot pounds, Six, 65 to 87. So I went with 75. This is gonna be fun trying to torque this down. So let's see how far we get. Ugh. And that's what I needed for two years. So thanks dad, you can now have this back. I feel like that's hand tight. Yeah. All right. That feels really smooth. First part, back on the bike. Well, looking for random extra parts. Might as well put this guy back on since he's here and relatively easy to do, I hope. Maybe not. Maybe. There we go. Okay, that's a little bit better. I don't really know where this angle is supposed to go, so I'm just gonna get it roughly close. And at some point, I'll sit on it, get a feel for what feels right, and then probably tighten it down at that point. Oh, that's cute. It's a new style of handlebars. All right, good enough for now. Okay, so I think while I have some of this front area available and there's not like the exhaust pipes and everything else here, I wanna do instrument cluster, the fuse panel, and then maybe a couple other electronics things just because I know it's gonna be a pain routing all of that around with everything else on the bike. So I'm gonna go ahead and start trying to work on that. I did also temporarily install the gauges as well as the fuse panel. This will probably have to come off to some extent um, just to route wires and get things to mount in a better position. This is the first set of bolts that I lost. So I had to use some different bolts that I had to mount the fuse panel. So I guess I wasn't as good as storing things as I thought I was. All right, so I was just trying to paint some parts outside and things started just flaking off and it was acting really, really weird. So I'm gonna have to work on that a little bit later, but I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to install the rear drive, which just had a sticker fall off, that's a bummer. Um, and the shocks in preparations for getting the rear and front tire on so that I can then put like the kickstand and the center stand on. So. I can get off of this and I can at least push it around. So I'll go ahead and get started on that. Boy, I tell you what, that was really scary. So turns out the threads inside of here were very badly damaged. So when I put this nut through, it went through just a little bit cockeyed, messed up the threads on here and further messed up the threads in here. I was able to clean this up with a thread chaser, but I didn't have one big enough for this hole inside here. So I had to take 
a much smaller one with the same thread pitch and just slowly basically work it around and carve out good threads for it. I then took a spare one of the opposite side bolts and ran it back and forth a bunch of times to kind of clean these threads out. So hopefully now I can get this all installed and we don't run into any more issues. All right. I do not want to talk about the deals with the devil that I had to do to get this to line up while that lining up. So now what I need to do is this very strange torquing procedure where, oh why, I have to torque the left side and loosen it, then torque it, then the right side, loosen it, then torque it, then torque that outer nut on. And then I think I'm done for the day after that. So these are both 58 to 80 foot pounds. So I'm just gonna do 70. All right, where's the breaker bar? Retorque it. Okay. Now, tighten the right hand pivot bolt, loosen it and retighten it, then up and down, then loosen, then retighten. This only goes to six to nine foot pounds which I'm gonna need this torque wrench for. What is that? Okay, I'll raise and lower a couple times. Feels fine. And then now we loosen and then retorque. Okay. Now we have to put this castle nut on and let's tighten that sucker down. And this is where the socket that I made comes in handy. So, oh, this will be fun. Keeping this from slipping off. Ah, all right, rear swing arm installed. Okay, so before I put some of the rest of the parts in, I do remember that the air box cannot come out through the side over here. You have to come out through the back. So I'm gonna slide that in from the back and before I do, I checked on the filter. It's still pretty soaked in oil. It looks okay. It doesn't seem like it's falling apart. So. For now, I'm going to leave it. It's easy enough to get out if I need to replace it later on down the line, but also the inside of this looks okay. So I'm just going to reuse them, and get them installed back in. Definitely one of the tighter, more confusing air box designs that I've seen. All right, so I've got the air box in and then I've got the rear splash guard back in. I don't think you can kind of slide it out with the tire back in. Uh, left shock is loosely mounted in there just to hold things in the position that they're supposed to be. And I have the right shock still off just in case I need to get in there like with the tire or something. Now I just have to figure out how to kind of tear this forward and make it so that I can get that rear wheel in there. All right, so this is probably an awful idea, but 
I've just got it resting here on the front. I'll get the tire on and then lean it back and see how it sits. All right, that's at least sort of in so it doesn't go anywhere. We got a tire. Okay, so I've been kind of going through some of the bolts and parts just to wrap up the right shock, right brake absorber arm, left shock. And I've come across a couple bolts that have been stripped relatively bad and if it wasn't for this little set that you can restore threads with, they've got like bars that you can run along the threads and chasers. If it wasn't for that set, I'd probably be up a creek without a paddle. So if you're working on an old bike or something and you're running into strip threads, I highly recommend one of these thread chasing sets. This is made by Lang. I think you can get it on Amazon for 40 or 50 bucks. So highly recommend picking one of those up. Okay, so I've done a little bit off camera. I did um, the little torque arm bolt install, installed the bolt for the right shock, left shock. I've got the axle through with the spacer in, and this gets torqued to 13 to 18 foot pounds, so I'll do 15, and then it needs a cotter pin. I believe the same thing up top, and then I can start doing the tightening assembly for the rear wheel. So I think I need a 12. Okay, let me see if I can get to this one. There we go. Okay, and I need to find cotter pins for those at some point. Okay, and then rear axle nut is 50 foot pounds. I'm gonna try and get lucky and do this without needing to put a pin through here to hold it. Done. I'm surprised that doesn't get a castle nut. But anyway, that's done. Now I think this can get torqued down, these can get tightened up on both sides, and the final drive bolts can get torqued up. Okay. Okay. Rear end is pretty good. Let's uh, think about what we've done. All right, so the next thing that I would like to do is get the front tire on as well as the side stand and the center stand. However, just based on this situation of it sitting on the dolly and not being able to get the center stand or side stand really on without a lot of effort, I need a way to raise the front up. So I had thought put the front axle in, jack up the front, get the center and side stand on and then rest it on that so that I could then work on the front tire. But unfortunately, when I jack it on the bottom, it starts to get very top heavy and it wants to fall over. So instead, I'm going to again do something probably very unintelligent, but I have for my garage door support a beam hanging down and I'm gonna ratchet strap around the handlebar and just pick it up a couple inches, throw those parts on, get the front tire on, and then set it back down. So let's see how that goes. All right, well, let's see how this goes. Oops.
Okay, well, not dead yet. All right, so let's get this side stand on. And then the uh, center stand so that I can hopefully prop it up on that. Then I can do the front tire. Let's grab some grease for the side stand. paint. Now I unfortunately cannot find the return spring for the center stand. So for right now I'm going to have to just like bungee cord it up or something but I'll find it eventually. So my manual does not say anything about torque spec, but these bolts look like 30 foot pounds ought to be good. So that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, those two are done. Let's see if we can support it on the center stand now. this going to fall forward? Ah, oh, dang. This sits on the front wheel on the center stand, stand not the back. Ugh. All right, well, we gotta get this up at least high enough to get the front wheel on then. Oh, that's really high. Oh boy. All right, hold tight. Okay, let's Get this front tire on. Oh crap, I need the bolt. All right, now we torque this 40 to 47, so I've set it at 45. That is the wrong size socket. I'll be with you momentarily. There we go, this looks better. Okay, front tire is on. Now let's see we can get this thing to be on the center stand. Okay, that looks about right. Oh, this is gonna be bad. Um, is there any way to do this easily without it crashing down? Oh boy, this is gonna be bad, but I got no other choice. Well, I'll be damned. First time in almost four years that this thing is back on two wheels. 
I'd say that's a, that's a pretty good accomplishment. Well, I think that's a significant amount of progress for the past two days to get the bike from sitting on a rolling dolly that it's been on for two years to standing by itself. It's got front suspension, the front tires back on, instrument gauge cluster, rear suspension, rear tire, all the other odds and ends. Really glad that this all got done. Now, over the next couple videos, I would like to do things like the carburetor, some of the hand controls. I did check the speedometer is working. I had thought I was testing it earlier that it wasn't working, but I used a drill on the back of it. Turns out it just needs to spin pretty quickly to get it to actually um, generate movement. So really glad that that's working out. Hope that you guys really enjoyed this episode. If you did, please like, subscribe, all that jazz. Uh, I am very close to 500 subscribers and I would love to be able to interact with the community more. And when you hit 500, it lets you do things like community posts. So anyway, I hope you guys are looking forward to more videos on this series. I know it's been a long time coming and I'm glad that I've got some, you know, the ball rolling and some motivation going. So anyway, thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next episode.